John, John Tomell, representing the Paltrows. Um, we've given you about four minutes, please, just to sort of introduce yourself and briefly share your platform, and then we'll take questions. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm known as John the Engineer Termel. This is my trademark. If you're going to laugh, at least know you're laughing at a guy with a science degree trying to save you. This is my cartoon from the 1993 election with me, my monkey, and the other political leaders. I'll go into that in a moment. How do I get 20 people in an hour to nominate me for Parliament out of a brand new riding where they don't even know me? I walk up and I say, hi, I want to be a candidate, and I want to explain how this Let's Time Bank software works. You ever heard of it? Most people go, no. I say, well, imagine where poor single parents can log on, what nights they can double-duty babysit each other's kids, and pay each other with one-hour bills, even when they're broke. Next thing you know, the mechanic's taking three hours per hour in his shop, the dentist is taking six hours per hour in his, de in his chair, and that's how the time dollar system works in Ithaca, New York. So, setting up your own time bank is why I run in these elections. Now, in the 1996 election against Sheila Cox, when I got into the Guinness Book of Records for running in more elections than anyone else, this is my page on the royalty and government page with Her Majesty the Queen. But it didn't go to my head because in the American version they got me on the same page as the world's biggest bagel. But anyway, I run in elections and I say, I don't need to get elected. I just need one person with a brain to go pick up the LET software and do it yourself. One month exactly to the day after the super loser fails again headline, Hamilton self-help groups announces they're starting up a Hamilton LET system. Mission accomplished. I didn't have to get elected. So. The software is available on the internet if you do your research. You're only going to get this one opportunity probably to hear me, all 20 of you. Nobody else will know. So here is what you're going to miss when I don't get in. Right now, across the world, every time they have a crash, people start up their barter systems. And you always hear talk about the LET software because it was the first in 1984, and I financed it. That's why it's my baby. I love seeing it still talked about these days. So this allowed people to get that done. Well, guess what? When Greece crashed a year and a half ago, they wanted to set up an online banking system as Plan B. Everybody gets an account and just trade with our own government chips if there's no more gold or money around. Ecuador now have online citizen banking. Jeremy Corbyn in the UK, quantitative easing, not just for the banks' interest-free loans, but for the government to put us to work, like the Comer case in Canada. Okay, can you wake up, please? All right, so basically, I'm going to explain every question about not enough money, how setting up a Let's Time Bank could provide the funding we need to do that. So, last point, I've got a site, smartestmanonearth.ca. Laugh all you want, but who would put it up in 20 years? No one put that site up before till I did. So go see if I got a claim to fame or not. Thank you. So the first one is a general question around affordable housing. Uh, there's a long wait, a long wait time for seniors to get into affordable housing. If elected, what plans do you have? Your party have? To address this shortage. Thinking outside the box, I don't like the idea of forcing cheaper housing when we can provide the people with more money to afford the current housing. So if there's insufficient funding to provide the housing, you can either try to cut the cost of the housing or you can either up the amount of money they get to buy the housing. What's easier? Well, when you try to cut the housing, now you're going to get less people bidding to build housing because for every one they can make it a profit, they've got to take one at a loss because you don't have enough money to buy them because we're too poor, a lot of our people. Now, when Argentina crashed in 1980s, the union said, we're not going to take any layoffs. We want the provincial governments to pay us with small denomination bonds we can use for hydro, taxes, 
medical or licenses so that anybody else in our civilization, our country, will take them from us. And they were forced to do that. And the government, instead of bringing a million dollar bond to a bank to get a million in bills, ones, printed up a million and one dollar pesos and spent them without having to pay interest to the banks. So every time I talk about using our own chips, our own local currency, I'm trying to avoid paying interest to use the private banking system's chips. And that's why every time you hear about a country talking about starting an online currency for their citizens, those are central bank accounts. Now, back to the affordability of hydro. In 1993, North York Hydro issued $25 gift certificates and sold them. And I kept saying, why don't you pay your employees with them? We'll all take them, we all pay hydro, but they didn't go that far, but that's how the system could have saved hydro all their interest if they had simply paid for their expenses with their own hydro chips backed up by electricity. So, it'll be the same solution to every other problem too. That's why I gotta try and make them entertaining, though it's always the same software running the answer. Many low-income seniors are finding it increasingly difficult with the rising cost of living. Of special concerns are the cost of food and the escalating cost of private. If elected, what would you do specifically to address these needs? Yes, we need all that. And I know how to pay for it. And she doesn't. Because you can't remember a thing she said, except that she wants it to be better. That's, I've been running in 88 elections, and I've been hearing these candidates who haven't looked at fixing money, always coming up with the same wish list of, we need this, we need this, you should have that, I'm in favor of this, my priority is this. And then when they get in and they fail, you say, you said we should have that, we didn't get it. And they go, well, I didn't say I'd get it for you, I just said I wanted you to have it. And she does. She wants you to have all those good things she listed but she got no clue how to give it to you, but neither do the others. I'm the only guy here who's saying Argentina used the working system to have full employment. You know, within five, when they set up the system in 2001, within five years they paid off all their foreign debt, and you didn't hear about it. So, you can go do your homework, you can go check out smartestmanonearth.ca to find out why that's me. I got twi In the last federal election, I got candidates from 12 different parties to support central bank accounts at the Bank of Canada for <coughs> citizens. 12 different parties. I, I Think about that. You can go see the list at my site. But how do you get 12 small parties to all agree on one smart idea? Well... Jesus said when it comes to fixing money and getting rid of interest, they will forever be hearing without seeing or seeing without seeing or understanding. But it's been given unto you to see the secrets of the kingdom of heaven at hand. This is it. All we got to do is stop the growth of our debts and suddenly this is really pretty heavenly existence. So our heavenly existence is polluted by loan sharking on our debts, which is why Jesus beat up the bankers in the temple. That ain't a message, what is? Uh, selling Hydro One will cost Ontarians upwards of $750 million every year forever. It's bad for business. The Ontario Chamber of Commerce says 20,000 Ontario businesses will close in the next five years due to rising electricity rates. <coughs> will you do what's best for the residents of Whitby, Oshawa, and ask? When to stop the sale of hydro? Well, you know, I want to cut the interest out of hydro's budget, which would make it affordable for us if we're paying what it actually costs and not the financing costs, too. So, you don't need to sell hydro if you've got a government with enough money that runs its own currency system. You don't need to, as a matter of fact. We could buy Highway 407 back and put it into the public realm. All we got to do is say, what do you say it's worth? 
a billion dollars. Well, here's a billion bucks in Ontario bonds you can spend anywhere in Ontario because anybody can pay for their hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses with it, just like Argentina. And suddenly, we can put 407 online for everybody. Now, oh, my last beef about transport with these double occupancy lanes. No problem there, except where you can't move out to s pass a guy who's retarding the traffic. Right? Now, when they had the Pan Am games, they called those the out outer lanes, and they didn't have a double line to stop those retarding the traffic from impeding us. So all we got it, now I would wonder, and was there any extra accidents? Because they didn't have the double lane, so which allowed people to pass the retards. So, that really bugs me if they're going to set up those lanes and they're going to allow the retards to slow us down. Because if you've got an open lane, 100 clicks an hour, and it's empty, some people think that they should get over in the other lane at 100 clicks an hour. They don't realize it's for when you've got to go faster. No one taught them that. So if we're not allowed to pass the people retarding us in traffic, it causes our politicians to seem as retarding as those drivers are retarding, doesn't it? So that's my beef about Transpo and those double occupancy lanes, too. I let us pass those retarding us. Okay. This, um, many seniors on low income need medical supplies on a monthly basis or equipment from time to time that are not covered by or they're struggling to make ends meet, sometimes having to choose between food and their medical needs. If you're elected, how would you go about working to address this issue? Do you know very many oldsters on short cash right now who didn't put in a lifetime of honest work? Actually, the poorer they are, probably the harder they work, right? So, they got ripped off. Right? They worked their lives to produce our cultural heritage, and then somehow they were left with nothing. Scammed. Rude. Now, if we could fix money, and you got yourself a Bank of Canada account, you could live on credit. Let's say you need a 50 grand machine today to live. How are you going to do? You're probably going to be dead. But in the world of the future, let's say you need a 50 grand machine. Well, you buy it. Now, the machine, how much you got to pay for it? The depreciation of the machine. Get it? Like when you buy a house with no interest. What do you got to pay for it? The depreciation of the house. When they build an arena interest-free, how fast do they pay it off? The depreciation of the arena. That's how it works when there's no interest. It's only depreciation. So... I honestly, they talk about guaranteed annual income. That's fine. I always call that the old social credit national dividend. When the robot takes your job, as long as you're getting a share of the robot's paycheck, you shouldn't care, right? So that answer by social credit takes away worries about unemployment due to technology <coughs> we're all threatened by if we don't have access to credit. So. I would be in favor of giving all the oldsters, all of us, including everybody actually, an interest-free credit card at the Bank of Canada. And if you need something, just spend it. And if when you die, you're in the negative, well, it's like automated database insurance. We'll all chip in 10 cents to cover your loss. But like in the old days of potlatch in BC, the big producers, they came at the end and they handed out all their stuff. So guys who die in the positive would hand it out to everybody, and that covers the guys who die in the negative. But as long as they tried, do you really want the poor negative guy being punished his whole life because he was in the negative? <laughs> and you want the guys in the positive getting an advantage for being positive? They don't have to work for? Interest is the cause of unearned income, the big ripoff, why all the rich dudes got all the cash and all you old dudes are all broke. And all you got to do is not get the cash back from the rich dudes. Uh-uh. Just get credit at the Bank of Canada. Be able to sidestep the Royal Bank, the TD Bank. And after that, 
You pay off all your debts, interest bearing. You owe one interest free debt. And after that, all your payments go against interest, I mean against principal, and someday we're all out of debt. No one else, you will ever hear a strategy for getting us all out of debt. But converting our interest bearing debts to interest free ones can do it. Well, during the last provincial general election, um, the student vote, if you YouTube for that, they asked all of the party leaders, minors included, to present an explanation and answers to their five questions. Now, if I could have explained how Argentina did it, how Greece and Switzerland's not going to have on online citizen banking soon, Ecuador already set it up, but if I could explain it to, you know, five, six, seven-year-olds, well, then it's obviously an explanation that adults should be able to get too. Now, my experience is that it goes in one ear and out the other. A lot of yucks, I'm a good show, but you won't remember it, okay? Because you will forever be hearing it without hearing and seeing without seeing or understanding when there's talk about interest rates, Jesus said, my favorite quote by him. So, the moment you can access your online Bank of Canada account, you can pay your student loans. You can pay your mortgage off. Every interest free, it's like opening a PayPal, except it's done by the Bank of Canada. And you don't have to buy in with your credit card, you buy in with a thousand hours of labor promised. The collateral in the world of the future is your time, making you sovereign in the world of the future's game. Because if, you're t if your chips are based on gold and you ain't got a gold mine, you're in big trouble. But if the chips are based on time and we all have some, now we can all get into the game. So, getting an ac accessing the Bank of Canada would allow you to convert all your interest-bearing debts to interest-free. And after that, all your payments would go against principal and someday you're out of debt. Now you hear talk out there about, oh, they're going negative interest rates. It's been zero interest rates for six years. Yeah. How many people do you know went and borrowed some interest-free money to pay off their interest-bearing debts? I don't know any. What? Are they stupid? There are zero interest rates out there. You didn't go borrow money to pay off all your debts? so that you got no more interest to pay? Why didn't you go borrow all that zero interest free money? Because you can't get it. And you're scammed into believing that's the state of existence, zero interest money, when you can't get any and the credit cards are loan sharking you at 24%. Duh. So, don't listen to when they say there's interest free money out there until you can get some of it. But. The neatest thing of all, now you hear about digital currencies all over the place. There are private ones now, government ones, Ecuador, Greece almost got one, Switzerland's having a referendum, Jeremy Corden in the UK, I had 12 parties pushing for central bank accounts for us in Canada at the last election, and that's what you didn't get. You did not get an interest-free Bank of Canada account that could have done all the things I just described. Why? Because no one told you. Because no one covers the smartest man on earth, Johnny Engineer, 100% in physics. No one else has made the claim in 20 years. So, I may be the losingest candidate in history, but who's having the last laugh when you realize what you could have had and didn't get? Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.